Are you looking for a simple and quick, easy breakfast dish that is oh so hearty and oh so good? Save you time on the holiday season or even when you're camping? We have got you a sausage breakfast casserole that is going to be the best thing ever. You want to check this one out for sure. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a beautiful day the Lord has made. And whoo, my name is Cowboy Kent Rollins. What do we do? A whole lot of cowboy cooking. Now, Christmas is coming up. I hope you got all your shopping done. But if you ain't, we're going to save you some time. This is a good old dish. And I have a special guest star coming in that taught me how to make this dish. My hair okay? Uh-huh. So, no, you got to come in when I tell you. Back off just a little, okay? You ready to go? So, folks, with a warm welcome, I need you to really put them hands together and let's welcome her into camp. Yo, sugar darling. Hey. Thanks for helping me out this Usually morning. Usually I'm behind the camera, but today... You took a bath and everything. I took a shower Whew. once a month. Growing up, we always had this Christmas morning, and the best thing about it is it's one of those that you prep the night before, stick it in the ice box, and then so when everything's crazy, people are opening presents in the morning, you can just take this out, put it in the oven, and it does all the work. Do you want to be my little sous chef today? Uh huh. I got a whole bunch of suey tools. Okay. So let's start off. Crack me six eggs. Well, you and do our know. Camp is you do know that the table is running away from itself. Yeah. So go ahead and crack those six okay. eggs. Okay. And the possum is going to have that one. Yep. Can no, I like, give them a little whisk. Beat them up well. Okay. So now to those eggs, we're going to add two and a half cups of milk. All right. Give me whoa. whoa! That was accident. All right, give me some salt and pepper to taste. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of dried ground mustard. Let's go ahead and add two tablespoons of mayonnaise to this. Uh, and I know you people be telling me you need to get some Dukes. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, they don't yes. carry it in my hometown, but I did get some and bring home. Dukes I had to hoard good. that stuff in my arms it to keep people stuff. from if eating it. If you guys it. haven't had it, it is good. So, uh, go ahead and dump that out. This is a can of cream of mushroom soup. And this can all be done the night before. That's what's great about it. So you have more I promise you. That's my Kent Rollins impression. So that will give you more time to wrap my presents. Yeah. Half a cup of milk. So we use three cups total. Give that a little whisk around. So, and you also want everybody to stick around till the end because I think you've got a special Christmas wish for everybody. Yes, ma'am, we do. It is something that is very near and dear to our heart and we'd like to share it with these people. So stick around till you see it say over and then there's gonna be some more. Now we are, we've got our nine by 13 casserole dish, but we're gonna show you also how to do it in a Dutch oven. But this is also a really good camping recipe. And we've done it a lot on ranches when we had to yes. move camp that day because it's something that was quick. We could drag out of there and cook. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I get a lot of people ask, can you use this in a Dutch oven? Yes, you can. The, now, the spray butter? Yeah. We don't, and we also don't season cast iron with this, but it's okay to cook with it. Yes. A sack of seasoned croutons. It's about three and a half cups if you've got loose croutons, or this is a five ounce sack. This is going to make the crust. I'm just gonna dump it out. Now kind of just spread it around so it makes a good even layer. Sort of like playing Yahtzee. Now, now we've got two cups of shredded cheese. Go ahead and evenly sprinkle over that. We got about 12 ounces of link sausage. Yep. You could use the patties and chop them up, but I like to use the link. I think it makes a better bite size. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and cook that. What? And now, let's take our egg mixture, give it another whisk again, and then evenly pour it. That wasn't too much even, but I'll just like help out and. Okay, well, I couldn't we see there like, at the end, no, I mean? There it goes. If you'll run that into the sloping end if of the table. Just like give it a little shimmy shake. Yeah. Or it'll do it. Remember our mushroom mixture we've got here? Uh huh. Even dollops just kind of all over it. And as this cooks, it's gonna like melt all in together and be yummy. If you don't want to use this canned mushroom soup and you've watched our video from making the smothered steak, you can use that mushroom soup mix that's on there, reckon? Yeah. Well, you got In the ice box, six hours or overnight. And then also from our cookbook, huh. Taste of Cowboy. Yes. What page is it? Let me check. You don't know if the page memorized? Uh, oh, page 47. Um, 350 degrees for about an hour and a half or till it's bubbling and heated through. Yeah. So usually before I cook it, while the oven's preheating, take this out and let it warm up just a tad. It'll 
reduce your cooking time a little bit. So we just showed them the way to do it in the house. inside. But of course we're outside, we're in camp. We gotta uh -huh. do a Dutch oven style. Yes, we if you're ever gonna use an insert, and that is what you have, which makes cleanup easier. But for this dish, it's nearly mandatory because you gotta let this sit in the icebox overnight. I have yeah. chilled a Dutch oven in a ice chest before, but I prefer not to. We don't hardly ever cook with inserts. And when we mean an insert, it's just usually like a cake pan or a pie pan that you put your dish in and then, or your food, and then you put it in the Dutch oven yeah. and cook it that way. We don't like to do that generally because it takes away the flavor that cast iron gives that dishes. That is right. Um, the heating also changes a little bit. So we prefer just going straight to the iron. But like you said, in this case, we didn't want to put the dish together and then chill the oven right. itself. So on this one, we do recommend that you put it into an insert. So for a 12 inch oven, you're looking at it like a 10 inch cake pan. Yeah. And this is lightly greased because when you're cooking with an insert and you put something in there, it's just a dry oven, that heat and moisture that gets trapped under there, it's hard on cast iron. So make sure you give it just a light coat of oil before you start. We did this the, last night, yep. put this together. Whew. And I've got my 10 inch cake pan and we're just going straight in there. And I'll be it fits. See, put your lid on and let's go to the far. Yes, ma'am. That's like the wise men, they come from afar. The cold placement is a little different on the dish from what y'all been watching us in previous episodes. Now, this has an insert in it and it has been chilled, so it's gonna take it longer to even get hot before it started. So automatically I'm going on a short trivet and I am loading the bottom heavy, heavy all the way around, cooking with mesquite and oak mixture today and then load the top up really well. We ain't got no wind today, so we ain't gonna have to rotate much, but we will eventually rotate a little to even out our heat. Now that insert is giving you a little buffer there to where you're not directly sitting on the bottom of that Dutch oven, so you can get things hotter and it's gonna take you longer to cook them because that insert is keeping you away from some of that heat. As it started cooking and this thing was bubbling, I mean, it was going good because I was cooking with me some good hearty mesquite coals today, I am. I had to pull the coals away from it, made sure there was nobody directly under there, raked them out of there, slowed it down a little. Then as it got even closer here, we done took it off the bottom heat and it is time to what? Check it and see what is happening. Well, I pulled it away from there with a fork and I can see that we're getting some good browning action all the way around. Now, when you pull that, you can did tell that them eggs are setting up a little. They are, and that's what we want. That's why it come off that bottom heat. But we gotta brown this top up, let them eggs set a little more on the top side of it. Well, it is a done deal. Now them inserts is hard to get out of there barehanded, so get you some of them CTs if you got them to grab a hold What's of there. What's a CT? That's a plier, that's the people that make them CTs. That's oh. what we always called them. I didn't know that. Oh, you have learned plier 101 today, uh-huh. <laughs> It'll set up a little bit more as it cools and then you don't burn the hide off your tongue. Well, as we usually say, it'll burn the hair off a frog's butt, it will. Yep, okay. Uh, In the oven, one hour, 15 minutes to an hour and 30, depending if you let it like warm up a little yeah. bit. And then outside, we had a really good mesquite wood. Yeah. And so we were probably 25 minutes. Yeah, pretty quick. Okay. If you, you want me to do it or you want Yeah, to? go ahead on, Shan, since you got the spoon. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it came out in one piece. Let me see if we can see. Can y'all see that like browning there? Just right. Ooh those croutons swell up as they set and then they just puff up and make this amazing crust. It's so fluffy looking. Yes, like, it is, and then my eggs. Mm. Yeah, those just, those croutons. Mm. So. Yes, ma'am, you won't burn nothing. That stuff right there is what you call fine mm. dining deluxe, you know what I mean? 
So usually it's about this time I break mm -hmm. into a happy dance, Shen. So they've seen me dance. They've seen the beagle dance. Let's see Shen's oh. version of the happy dance. Ready? What do you call? <laughs> Is that like yes. the washing machine? Uh-huh. Yeah. Woo, that's good. So the egg mixes with the crouton and makes almost like this souffle Whoa, kind of big deal word. with a crust a little bit and I have to tell you too so we also always serve this with what do you call them mimosa traditionally a mimosa is orange juice and champagne but I don't like champagne that much so we use a Moscato wine it's a sweet white wine and it's a little slightly bubbly. It's, it's, I think it's much better than champagne. And most people got a corkscrew opener. I don't got we one. Lot, yeah. Those pliers are coming in handy today. Look at you. To an easy Christmas dish that saved you time and effort. You didn't have to rush around Christmas morning, miss out on opening the nope. presents. You already had this done the night before. Whoa there. Somebody got into their mimosa. That's not bad at all. I know, I like it. Anything that we used in this recipe and everything will be down below. Shan always has it there. We never take it for granted that y'all stop by and watch our videos. We appreciate it so much. I do tip my hat as always to the veterans and all those that have served and are serving now to keeping that old flag flying here in camp. And Santa Claus will see it on his way by. I <laughs> promise you that. Thank you and but thank you all for letting us into your homes this whole past year and before. It's very special for us to be, be a part of your family and you a part of ours, so thank you. God bless you one and all. We thank you so much for stopping by camp and we'll see you down the Mimosa Brunch Trail. Yes, ma'am. Thank y'all. It was so cold I could barely hold the match still as I tried to light that lantern that morning. My hands were shaking and there was a stiff north breeze that coming under the fly of the wagon. I felt like there was nothing between me and the Canadian border at this time. And on this day, the last breakfast of the works in the Paladura Canyon in Texas. About the time I'd try to light that lantern, the match had burned out. This seemed to go on forever as I discussed that lantern's pedigree. But finally, there was light, a small beacon of encouragement on this, the 21st day of December at 3.45 in the morning. I didn't know the actual temperature at the time and it's probably better off I didn't, but the water barrel was froze solid, so I had to chop ice to make coffee. And then the lantern went out again. I knew I should have changed that propane bottle before I went off to sleep last night. So back at it again with trembling hands and a match. I said, God, let there be light. I need a little help. Those cowboys are depending on me to give them nourishment and warmth before they go off to do bovine battle. And then it was a small Christmas miracle as the first match struck home. And there I was back in business. I stoked old Bertha full of mesquite knots and slid that coffee pot over there to let the magic start. I pulled that old canvas chair up there next to that stove and said, Thank you, Lord, for the heat and the light. So many mornings I've started this way, but something about this one seemed different. It was about that moment when I felt the howling winter's breath stop. It was like someone shut the north door and all I could hear at that time were the crackling of embers inside old Bertha as she began to come to life. I sat there and thought how blessed I was as I soaked in that stove's warmth. I felt something come over me. A calmness. I knew this feeling. It was a feeling that I'd had as a child on Christmas morning. It was a feeling of hope, love, light, and faith. And then I remembered a Christmas message that I'd heard at church so long ago. It was about those same feelings. And I understood it now at this moment better than I did some 45 years ago. It was about a cold night. And it too started with a light, a guiding light a beacon of new beginning. The light drew folks in, and there they found a small child at a stable lying in a manger. This child brought hope. This child brought peace, the true meaning of Christmas. Now I bet when you started hearing this story, you didn't think it was gonna be a Christmas story, 
but I ask you to think back. You see, my morning started out on a cold night and I needed light, light to see, light to begin. I doubted if that lantern would ever light or the wind would ever quit blowing. But I asked God for a little help and he did. And he has ever since. Just like that lantern that ran out and ran empty, we too have to be refueled every day. And we get that from that small child that lay in that manger. Those men that came to see that newborn child so long ago came bearing gifts. Well, the fellows who are drawn to the light of my camp and warmth of that old stove have brought me a gift too, the gift of friendship. Now I know these fellows who visited that small child so long ago were dressed as wise men and shepherds. And the men in my camp, they're dressed as cowboys. But they too were wise because they chose to follow. The path that we have chosen may be trying at times, but that child born in a manger gives light every day to guide us along the way. My hope to you this Christmas is that there is a light around you and your families, a bright light of love, hope, and faith, and a Merry Christmas to you all.